if you look at the best-selling record players on Amazon, you'll notice a couple things in common. First is that almost all of them use the same crappy turntable mechanisms that both I and Tecmon did videos about. And also quite a few of them are all-in-one systems that also include a radio tuner, a CD player, and an extremely basic cassette player, usually stuck on the side, that looks like something out of a 1980s car radio. Because you just stick the cassette in and it starts playing. and the only control you get is for fast forward or to eject the tape. You don't even get rewind. That's because it literally is the mechanism out of a car radio. It's based on an old Tanishin design. Tanishin has not manufactured any cassette mechanism since 2009, so the ones made these days are all unauthorized clones of it made by various manufacturers in China. But thanks to the Internet Archive, I was able to find Tanishin's description for their original version of it. It's the model TN301N car cassette tape deck mechanism. The features listed are compact design and auto stop mechanism with play tape wind up. Applications are compact cassette for car stereo, one way car stereo mechanism, and there's two variations of it, although they both list the same features, auto stop, fast forward, pause, and radio tape switch. And those all-in-one systems containing that cassette player are very popular. During the holiday season, I've seen this Victrola system get as high as the top 40 of all electronics on Amazon, which most likely makes it the most popular type of cassette player that people are buying today. So with that in mind, I wanted to get my hands on one without needing to buy one of those mahogany monsters. I thought I could just buy the mechanism itself, like you can do with those cheap turntable mechanisms, you can find those on eBay or Amazon. But I looked all over and I couldn't find anyone selling these cassette player mechanisms. It seems that whatever company is making them isn't selling them individually. They're only selling them as part of assembled units. So the closest thing I was able to find is this. The Pile Contemporary USB Cassette Player model PL5 CSUB. This is actually a discontinued model and it took me quite a while just to find one of these. But you can still buy them directly from the manufacturer in China. The company that makes them is Haiping Electronics Company Limited in Guangdong, China. Their model number for it is the HP SP03 and with a minimum order of a thousand units you can get them for as low as ten dollars each. So it essentially is the same kind of slot loading car radio style cassette player mechanism mounted into a wooden box with a built-in amplifier and speakers. And it also has line outputs and a USB output. So with just one knob and one button, you could say this is the simplest cassette deck ever made. It's not designed to be portable or battery powered. It runs on a 9 volt AC adapter. And the entire cabinet is made of wood fiberboard. The speakers are 3 inches in diameter, so they're larger than the ones built into those suitcase style record players. And it couldn't be any simpler to operate. You just stick in your cassette with the side you want to play facing the front. And you get out of it something approximating music. You don't want to listen to the entire cassette all the way through. You can fast forward by pushing down on this button until it locks into position. Now it's fast forwarding. 
It's not a very fast fast forward, but it is faster than just letting it play. And to stop fast forwarding, you just push it lightly until it releases, and now it's playing again. Lock your car with the power door lock switch. If the alarm is triggered accidentally, insert the door key in either outside door lock and turn it. And to eject the tape, you just push down the button all the way until the cassette pops out. See, your Cavalier is also equipped with automatic safety belts that move into place when you close your door. These kinds of safety features have helped earn Cavalier outstanding marks on government highway safety tests. An important under the skin feature is Cavalier. So because this only has fast forward, if you want to rewind the tape, what you have to do is eject the tape, flip it over to the other side, put it back in, and fast forward the opposite side of the tape. Then eject it again, flip it back over to the first side, and start playing it again. Position. If you wish, you may also fully recline the seat. Your Cavalier is also equipped with automatic safety belts that move into place when you close your door. But it'll probably be actually faster to use one of these hand-powered cassette tape rewinders. I don't think they make these anymore, but they were common back in the 1980s. So you could rewind the tape without using up the battery power of your Walkman. So there's really not much more to show about the operation of this style of cassette player. You just stick in your tape and it starts playing. Another key opportunity for using the phone in getting prospective customers on the conveyor belt is to qualify them by phone. Fact is, most sales managers readily agree that nearly two-thirds of all face-to-face -face sales visits should never have taken place. And because it has a line output, now I'll give you a direct hookup sample of how it sounds. Looking inside the cabinet, we can see the amplifier board, the cassette player mechanism, the circuit board for the volume control, and the speakers. It uses a Class D amplifier chip with a heatsink on it, and Pyle claims it puts out 25 watts, and that actually is a legitimate rating for these Class D chips. However, that's at a supply voltage of 27 volts and it's measured at 10% distortion but this thing is running on a 12 volt power supply not 27 volts and if you look that up on the data sheet you can get about 3 watts per channel out of this chip before the distortion starts to skyrocket. The speakers in this are okay. No literally that's the brand name on them okay. Their impedance is 4 ohms and they're rated at 5 watts which I think is a bit optimistic considering the small size of their magnets. There's the little sub board for the USB output you can see the chip and the clock crystal on it and these are just an off-the-shelf design used in many audio components. And there's the mechanism in all its glory. It's almost entirely made of metal and it's extremely simple. There's only one spindle. It only has to take up a real spindle because it only goes in one direction. It doesn't rewind, so it doesn't need the other one. And when you pop in the tape, it pushes against this piece here, which snaps it down, engages the capstan and pinch roller, raises the playback head into position, and starts playing the tape. And when you push in the button to fast forward, what that does is release the pinch roller from the capstan and also move the playback head away from the tape. It does not increase the motor speed, 
What it simply does is release the tension from the pinch roller and allow it to take up the tape as fast as it can. And when it reaches the end of the tape, that triggers the auto stop mechanism, which pushes down slightly on this switch to turn off the motor. So it does not release the playback head or the pinch roller from the tape. It just switches off the motor. So once you reach the end of the tape, you should push in the button all the way to eject it. And that raises this up, pops out the tape, releases the playback head and the pinch roller. And you can see it pushes down on the switch to shut off the motor. Here's the underside of the mechanism. There's just one belt and once you remove this plastic mounting frame, it's very easy to get to. In fact, I don't think you even need to remove this plastic frame to get to it. If you just have a little hook or something to help you get it on the pulley. And I'll try to trigger the mechanism as if I was inserting a tape. And you can see it moves certain things into position. You can see the grease on the mechanism. And here's the action of the fast forward. You can see how it latches into place and then releases with these springs. And here's what happens when you push it all the way in to eject. So it's a really simple mechanism, largely made of metal, so it should be pretty sturdy. Only real weak spot is probably just the belt and the motor. Because that's not a genuine Mabuchi motor, even though it has their name on it. You can tell because it's not stamped into the bottom. For comparison, here is a genuine Mabuchi motor. And if you look at the bottom, it has Mabuchi motor stamped into it. So that's the way you can tell the difference between a genuine one and a knockoff. And the unique thing is this is a clockwise motor. Whereas every cassette mechanism I've seen that has all the functions, including rewind, uses a counterclockwise motor. You can see it says CCW instead of CW. So that may be another reason why these car radio style mechanisms are so popular because they use a clockwise motor and so do turntables. So that allows them to share parts. You can take a turntable motor and put it in one of these and use the same thing. And because they're making millions of these cheap turntable mechanisms every year, that makes these clockwise motors less expensive than the counterclockwise motors that are used in the more full-featured cassette mechanisms. And if you need to adjust the speed of the cassette player, because it might be playing slightly too fast or too slow, you can do that by sticking in a small flat blade screwdriver or preferably one of these non-conductive adjusting tools into this hole here. You have to turn it a little bit until you feel it drop down into the notch in the motor and then as you twist it slightly left or right that will adjust the motor speed. There's also a little felt pad that rubs against the belt. I've seen this in other cassette decks as well. I'm not sure exactly what the purpose of it is but I guess since this belt is rather long I think it may be there to try to help dampen vibrations in the belt. And now if the mechanism reinstalled, we can see it in action. I'll pop in a tape. The only one. I know you and there it is playing. And I'll engage the fast forward. You can see it moved the pinch roller away from the capstan. And release that, goes back to play. Now I'll eject the tape. And I have to say, I'm not impressed with the wobbliness of the flywheel. It's nice that they made it out of metal instead of plastic, but they sure could have made it straighter. That's certainly contributing to the wow and flutter. And there was the action of the auto stop mechanism. You can see it trigger that switch to stop the motor, but it did not release the pinch roller or the playback head, so you still have to eject the tape to do that. And there's actually one undocumented feature about this style of cassette player, and that is this line output jack on the top actually doubles as a line input, so you can connect any external audio source, such as this Walkman, 
and play it through the built-in speakers and it also will output it through the USB. So like it or not this very basic slot loading cassette player is probably the most popular kind of a cassette player on the market today and I'm sure some would argue that this is giving people a bad impression of what cassettes can sound like but you have to remember in those all-in-one systems there's a very low bar of comparison versus those cheap record player mechanisms they have. So I would wager if people actually compared playing a cassette on one of those systems versus playing a record, they would actually discover that the cassette sounds better. And with the rise in popularity of cassette tapes in recent years, I would think there would be a market for this style of cassette player that I have here. If either Pile wants to reintroduce it or if some other company wants to introduce their own version of it. Because despite how basic it is, it actually doesn't sound that bad. And it couldn't be any simpler to operate. I never saw stars so bright But if you gotta go home You gotta go home Give me a good night kiss It's a pity to say farewell Because the man in